What's up guys, how you doing? Welcome to another video. So today we are talking about a setup for a remote camera behind the goal in football or soccer. We're gonna go down to our local park. I'm gonna show you guys how I set up that camera. Now I've done some videos on this in the past, but I've never had the opportunity to just be on my own with a goal without any pressure to get ready for a game or people distracting me or anything like that so I thought you know what I believe there are some goals down in my local park from here that we can take a wander down to and I can take my time step by step show you exactly how I set up a remote camera when I want to set one up behind the goal if you guys are excited for this video take a second go hit that like button for me it helps me out loads on my channel and I really really appreciate it if you guys are new to the channel think about subscribing hit that subscribe button loads of other videos coming on my channel which I think you will enjoy loads of you guys been checking me out on social media lately been looking at my Instagram page the main one for this kind of stuff is my sports Instagram which is at Rob Sandal Sport go check that out go comment on something tell me it came from YouTube because it's always cool to see who's come to my Instagram page from the YouTube channel now before we look at the actual setup in the park with the goal I thought I would show you the kit that you're gonna need to be able to do something like this we're just gonna go through it item by item and everything that I talk about is going to be linked in the description below so if you want to go have a look at the gear in a bit more detail maybe you want to consider buying some of it for yourself then go check it out links in the description you can see all the details there now of course the first thing that you are going to need is a camera and for us for this we're going to be using my 1DX so my 1DX will be the camera that we use for this particular setup Second of all, of course, you need a camera lens. Now, for something like this, you want something wide angle because you want to be able to get loads of the goal in. So for this, I will be using my 17 to 40 lens. You want something that's really wide so you can get your goal post and your crossbar and everything in the frame. If you have something too tight and that's in fairly close behind the goal, it could be that you're struggling and you don't want that. You want to make sure that you can get a really wide angle. So I probably will be right out of my 17 mil when I set this up, but a wide angle lens is what you're going to need. Next up you are going to need something to put it onto and I have got my mini tripod. I talked about this in my accessories video just recently and if you've watched that you know that you can pick up one of these for a really good price. Just a little mini tripod it doesn't have to be anything fancy it's only going to have a camera on it it's going to be sat still. A little tabletop tripod like this would do just the job. Then you are going to need something that you can use to fire that remote camera and by that I mean triggers. Now you can get all different types of radio triggers at the moment I'm using the Pocket Wizard Plus 3s. You can get a whole host of different Pocket Wizards. You can also get some cheaper triggers. Previously, I've done this with Yongneo triggers. Those are decent. They work fine. I'm going to link this and also the Yongneo ones in the description because those are much, much cheaper. The only one thing to consider if you do look at those cheaper Yongneo triggers is that you can't fire them from the hot shoe of your camera, which you can with the Pocket Wizards. So I'm going to show you that as we get later on. But just bear that in mind. If you go for those cheaper triggers, they will then rely on you pressing the button to fire it later on and then lastly you're just going to need a cable your cable is going to go from the pocket wizard and then plug into the camera that you want to fire nothing too fancy for the cable again links in the description for that one okay so we are actually going to send past rob down to the park because i went down there yesterday and filmed all that for you since then i've shaved and i realized oh no when you guys watch the video it's all going to look backwards because i've shaved and i haven't so past rob is going to get down to the park he's going to go check that out for you and he's going to show you exactly how this setup works. Let's get going down there. Right, here we are down at Stadium the Park. <laughs> I've found some goals that we can use to demonstrate this goal remote, which is perfect. It's not Premier League, but it's good enough for us to see exactly what we need to do to set up a behind the goal remote camera. First of all, let's get the rig together. Okay, so first thing is we're gonna need, of course, the camera and the lens. And as we said earlier, we've got the 1DX and we've got the Canon 1740, and we need to attach it to the mini tripod, because of course that is gonna be our main setup that we will be using for this remote camera. Then we're gonna need our triggers. Now with these pocket wizards, you can set them so that they uh, transmit, they receive, you can set them so they transmit and receive, all different things. For the purpose of this, we're gonna set one to transmit only and one to receive only. And the receive only one is the one that's gonna go on top of the camera, because of course the other one is transmitting to this one, which is receiving, and we need this one to then fire the camera. So you put it into the hot shoe, you just do it up like that. You get the cable for it, which you plug straight into the front of the pocket wizard, and then you just 
plug the cable into the remote shutter or the shutter release socket in the side and that is good to go if you've got a bit of loose cable like i have you can just kind of wind it around the bottom but that's then set up you need to then get your other trigger and of course this trigger is the one that's set to transmit only the next thing to do is to make sure they're both on the same channel so for the purpose of this i'm going to make sure that they are both set to channel 15. just as a test i can press the test button on this one and see if it fires this one and if it's all working fine it should fire the camera it is so i hope you guys can you can hear it's working, so perfect. Next thing is to position it where we want it to go. Now, when it comes to the actual position of the camera, you've got quite a few different options. You can go down in the corner and kind of wide angle, sort of looking up or towards the side of the goal. If you do that, I always think it's important to get the post and the crossbar in the frame. If you're missing one or the other, it kind of looks a little bit like you can't see where some of the goal is. You can go in the middle, kind of wide angle. Of course, you need a real wide angle and you need to be slightly further back if you're going to go in the middle. In some grounds, you don't have that option because you can't get very far back because it could be that there's some hoarding like right up close to the goal so you can't get far enough back to get the whole goal mouth in i find the images tend to look better if it's taken down from one of the corners anyway now for my setup now i'm going to choose to set it up down low down on the right hand side of the goal so let's go start setting it up Okay, so we're down here ready to set this up. Now, the first thing I want to make sure I've got right is the focus. Now, when I do the focus, I pre-focus. So I focus in advance. I then set the camera to manual, manual focus so that the focus won't try and change after I've set it. And I leave it so I'm happy. That, of course, means it's quite important to get it right first time. So first thing we're going to set to help us do that is the settings. Now, settings-wise and focus, I know I'm going to need a fairly decent depth of field. I'm going to be focusing on about the goal line or maybe just in front of the goal line. And I want to make sure if the ball is a bit behind or beyond that point it still gets it in focus I want to make sure I get the attacking players maybe the goalkeeper the ball everything that I possibly can I want to be in focus which means I need quite a deep depth of field with that in mind my aperture is probably going to be set to sort of 5.6 or even 7 something like that higher up so let's for the sake of today it's a bright day so in real terms if I had weather this bright I would probably be setting it to about 7 something like that Okay, so the aperture is set to 7.1. Now shutter speed, of course, we know we want a fast shutter speed as we do with all sports photography. So for the sake of this, I'm gonna set that to 1,000th of a second. In fact, it's a bright day. Let's go 1250th of a second. And then in terms of the ISO, we just want to set our ISO however high it needs to be in order to get the correct exposure with both of those other two settings. So let's just take a test shot to see. Okay, so in the current lighting conditions, I've had to set my ISO to 800 to achieve the right exposure whilst keeping the aperture at 7.1 and the shutter speed at 1250th of a second. So settings wise, we're happy for now. Next thing is focus. Now the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna position myself as I have right now, about where the camera is gonna go. So the camera's gonna go on the floor here in front of me. So I know I've got it about the right distance away from the thing I want to focus on. So I'm gonna manually focus on something it might be a line on the pitch it could be a like you know a little rough patch on the dirt anything that the camera can grab focus on so i'm going to focus on the ground about a foot in front of the goal line right now okay i've done that and now i'm going to switch my camera to manual focus so i know it won't try to focus again beyond this point okay and then the next thing is for me to angle the camera so it's where i want to be in the Hold the phone, hold the phone. Now, I realise I'm just editing this video and I've realised there is one really important thing I forgot to say at this point. I was distracted because there's no net in that goal that I'm working with, so it threw me off. But when you're setting up that camera, at this stage here, when you're happy you've got that set up, there's one other test you want to do. Get hold of that net and pull it back and see if it comes far enough back for your camera. What you've got to think is if a ball gets kicked by a footballer, potentially a professional footballer, it is going to be flying and if it hits that net and it stretches that net towards your camera what's going to happen your camera is going to take the brunt of that shot from the football you don't want that to happen pull back that net check it doesn't reach far enough to hit your camera if it does move your camera back ever so slightly remember you'll need to refocus when you do that but move that camera back ever so slightly just to make sure that the goal net does not hit the camera right back to past rob the way I do this is I turn a live view on the back of the camera so I can see what the camera's looking at. I get down low and I position the camera until it's exactly where I need it to be. Okay, so I'm happy that's where I want it to be. I've got the angle just right. The last thing to do before we walk away from it is to check the remote triggers are still working. So we're gonna do that two ways. First of all, we're gonna do it on our hand and we're just gonna press the test button again. 
perfect, that's firing. Second thing we're gonna do is check it works from our camera. So the transmit pocket wizard just goes into the hot shoe on top of the camera that you want to fire the remote. Now in my case, I pretty much always use it on the 70 to 200. That's because when the ball is in and around the goal, I'm normally photographing with my 70 to 200, which means this is the one, that's the time when I want that other camera firing as well. You don't need any cables for the transmit one. You just need it to sit in the hot shoe. And every time you press your shutter, it should fire the camera as well. So let's test that. You guys probably can't hear it because I've blocked the microphone from where it is, but it is working, it's all good to go. So perfect, we're happy. We can head back to our corner position where we're setting up for this game <laughs> that isn't really gonna happen, but we can head back to our corner position and we're happy that remote is now set and good to go. Okay, I think we're pretty comfortable that that remote setup is good to go. Hopefully it captures some action. With these kind of things, they are they are really hit and miss. You, you will go 10 games and get nothing at all that's decent from this kind of remote camera. But sometimes you get that cracking shot, you know, the goal score, scorer has scored the balls in the shot is slid into the goal the keepers looking furious in the background sometimes it works really really well but for now let's head back to the office so that we can round off our video Okay guys, that's about it. That's the setup. That is how you do a remote camera behind the goal in football or soccer. I hope you found that interesting. I hope you found it useful. Please take a second, go hit that like button if you did. Comment below if you've got any other questions. I've not got too much going on outside of these videos right now, so I'll be replying to all the comments. I always make an effort to do that. So comment if you've got any additional questions. In the meantime, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you, I will see you on the next video.